Hello everyone and welcome to the 2021 Skyline Classic presented by Innova. We're here at the Silver Fox course. This is your second and final round taking place. We're in Kenosha County Disc Golf Courses. I'm Terry Miller, the Disc Golf Guy. Sometimes those are the same, sometimes they're not. We're looking at hole number 10, par 3, 307 feet. Bends from right to left the entire way and also plays uphill. Certainly gettable at 307 feet. But like everything else out here at the Silver Fox course, you definitely got to keep it in the fairway. Otherwise, you may give a stroke or two back to the field. Coming into our back nine, we got Tanner Helm just teeing off there. He's the lefty. That's CJ King, rated 983 out of Kakana, Wisconsin. Fine makers of lots of different cheeses. Go find your local cheese spread. It might just say Kakana on it. That's right here in Wisconsin. Jeff Matthews out of Antioch, Illinois, located 15 to 20 minutes south of where this course is. I know Jeff comes up here and plays often. And on the tee now is Andrew Brown, in of a sponsored competitor, coming into the round at 994 as his rating. And coming in hot to the pin on 10. Little Halo Destroyer action. Nice shot. And after the terrible kick off to the right side, Jeff just trying to find the fairway. He's done so. Now just looking to get up and down, walk away with a bogey. And he'll have some work to do to save that. Makeable range for CJ, trying to save par. We saw the rain, the rain slowly creep in around like holes six and seven, and it continued to pick up. And now I think it's here to stay, unfortunately. Tanner doesn't want to mess with the roll away potential. So this is Jeff for double bogey. Rough start to the back nine, especially on a hole. You're seeing a fellow competitor line up for his birdie. You guys are like, oh, hey, where's the stats? Oh, I've got them for you. Don't you worry. Thanks to our friends over at PDGA.com. Hole 10 averaged 3.14 on the day. Right in the middle in terms of overall difficulty on the course. Hole 11, the next hole, pretty similar. And certainly no one pulling away with anything. All four of these competitors started the round at six under par. They were in a four-way tie for first place at six under. And you see Andrews at even, Tanner's at even, Jeff two over, and CJ currently four over. Everybody just trying to say nice and dry. Paul, the cameraman. We head over to hole 11, downhill, straight shot, 376 feet. I know I sound like a broken record, but off to the left and right, and even deep, can be really punishing out here. 
You're looking at drone footage that came in a few months later, more so during the fall. So clearly a little bit thicker, more grown in, but the tip remains the same. Find the fairway. And Andrew's done just that. That leaks off to the left side of the fairway for the lefty, Tanner Helm. Here's CJ. Been a little bit tricky. Rather than trying to go right up the gut, decides he's going to try and go up and around everything. And you see it push from left to right. Let's see if that gives him a look or if he gets caught up. was coming in hot. Definitely was going to go way deep of the pin had it not got caught up. So that's actually a pretty good tree kick. Unfortunately, I think Tanner by now could just about be our tour guide for Everything not in the fairway. Almost willing it in there is Andrew's birdie look. And although it was a good tree hit, it's got a little work to do here to try and pick up the birdie for Jeff. You gotta love the effort, not short with it. And that's what CJ was left with. And at this stage in the round, you're a couple holes into being wet, but it's a matter of contemplating. Do I go with the rain jacket? Do I keep the umbrella up? Do I not? Is it more of a hassle than not? What's my outerwear like? Am I at a point where I'm giving up on drying off the discs and I'm just going to throw them wet? All of those things start coming into play. How many more dry towels do you have? Is the rain going to actually stop? Have you rationed your towels knowing that you've got enough to clear out or finish out your round? So many questions when playing golf in the rain. We we'll take a look at hole 12, a par 4, a very short one at 374 feet. Again, I don't look at this in terms of the distance. It's obviously the angle of the fairway. That makes it so challenging. Not a hole you're going to really be able to access easily for the eagle. Certainly is possible. Andrew playing for position off to the right side. You see how much Tanner lets off on that. And does get a good tree kick. And CJ trying to go with the aggressive route. Do that every time. Okay. <laughs> I've never even seen that and certainly not punished for his attempt. He, as he said, he pulled it too high. But this time I think he's going to get away with a favorable kick. Traditional route up the middle. Maybe a little bit tight on the left side. <laughs> 
frustration level increasing by Tanner, understandably so. Not a fun day to be out playing disc golf. Good shot, Trying to take out the cameraman. Dustin, Dylan, and Paul all on cameras. I appreciate those guys braving the elements. I was sitting underneath a tent while they were out there. I promise you that. Awkward stance for Tanner. Shot. But that should work. You know, you think about this as 374 feet. You wouldn't think it would be that difficult. But we see the work that needs to be done to get up there and give yourself a look and just how much trouble can be had. Ended up being one eagle on the day. So nice work by Brett. This played as the second easiest hole on the course. 0.33 below par. I've got plenty of in-zone quick sticks available. If you need some, find us on shop.thediscgolfguy.com. The XXL version, along with the regular one. Pull 13, par 4. This one through the gap, then finishes to the right-hand side. A little dog leg once you get all the way through the gap. So you're playing straight out, and then it will continue off to the right and then fade slightly downhill. Very memorable hole out here, hole number 13. And that'll work. You'd love to be to the right. However, a perfectly straight shot, not a problem. Similar territory to where we just saw Andrews. A couple extra feet of power. You see the increased consistency of the rain here. And this was actually quite shocking for me to, to see and share with you guys that hole 13 here played as the single easiest hole on the course. I would have never guessed that. Regardless of what these guys are doing, I just, I would not have guessed that. The par four playing at 3.63. And Andrew gave it the right amount of power. He thinks he was short, but as that crests the hill, it starts to move down. So you just want to come up short and then, yeah, skip the rest of the way down. And Great shot there by Jeff. Too much. Yeah, unfortunately, Tanner called it without being able to see it. Realizes that goes down in the depths of hole 13 behind it.
A little frustration out of Tanner. And just sneaking it in. Great birdie pickup for CJ King. He'll move from plus three to plus two on the round. He started at six under, as did the rest of the card. Andrew trying to get to two down for the round. Self-congratulatory fist pump there. Subtle. Noni's certainly vying for the title here. Trying to pull ahead of the rest of his card. Maybe keeping an eye on the chase card. Ryan Heady, Scotty Tuhati, a few others trying to do some work back there. We head over to hole 14. Beautiful hole that plays down the hillside to this general landing zone. You don't want to push it too far. Here would be great if you could. And from here, continues to gently fade down and to the left to this beautiful green. You want to tell me it's your favorite hole on the course? Okay, I could get behind that. Certainly not a full power swing there by Andrew. CJ said it best. That should work. Pull 14 here averaged 4.35. So just 20 feet longer than the previous hole, but a very different story when it comes to the scoring. And you really just can't throw a better shot than what we just saw there, especially from a left-handed thrower. In fact, you could say that a lefty might have an advantage here if they're throwing with just the right amount of turnover to kind of get it to fade out or fight back at the very end of its flight as that attempted to do. trees aren't as friendly as some of the trees I find in Texas. Good placement shot for CJ. We'll see if Jeff here has the opportunity to get a little bit aggressive or if he's really just trying to pitch it out, set himself up for his third shot, be content to walk away with a th uh, four which is the par, and I'm thinking about how right now par is actually going to gain strokes on a quite a bit of the field, and you see he's going for that high line and then gets a terrible kick back into the left side. Let's see if Tanner can take advantage of this incredible tee shot. Interesting, interesting phrasing. Great hole so far. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if that exudes a, or if that uh, is a display of lack of confidence on the green yet. 
Uh, we're hearing that for the first time. That's funny. Hey. You've done good thus far. Don't F it up. <laughs> Andrew with a long look and like a number of the greens out here. If you're too aggressive on the putt, that's fine because they're going to play downhill, but you've got a chance for it to catch edge and then maybe go into the rough. And that was a great angle for CJ's run. I feel like every chance on the green, you, you can make a, a medium to long range putt, but you can also get punished with the comebacker in terms of some kind of obstruction. And that happens quite a bit on the greens here. So Jeff falls back to five under. Hannah's trying to pick up a birdie, but Andrew pulled ahead of the rest of the card. And look at that concentration. <laughs> As he said, at least it was his umbrella. A lot of players would feel pretty bad if their umbrella did that, but great concentration. Nice work by CJ. Solid putt. And Andrew's just looking to maintain. He's going to have the two-stroke advantage with Tanner. There's 15 through 18 to play, and Andrew giving the props on how, just how great of a drive it was. Hole 15, a par four. Plays all the way down the tunnel with a little bit of a right-to-left bend at it. And then when you get to this point, it starts curving back up and to the right. S significantly, that finishing dog leg tail to it. A really good forehand flex shot by an upper level thrower could certainly get him, him or herself there. Pull 14. Played at .35, now we're on 15. Plays as about the sixth most difficult hole. Played exactly at even par. Par four, right on it. 4.00 was the average for the open field. That's trouble. That's more trouble. And it landed in trouble. That was heading to the trouble zone. And all things considered, that's a great stop for where that could have went. CJ just trying to punch out. That should work. Now he's got work to do to save the par. Beautiful shot. Here's CJ lining up his third after we just saw Tanner trying to punch out. And that's a nice touch forehand. As you may have heard in the front nine, every year I host the Skyline Classic, usually a PDJ B tier, on the Wisconsin Disc Golf Tour, which I believe it is in its... I don't know, 30th or 35th year of existing. As Tanner's is up and over. 
Usually for the Skyline, they'll play one round at this course, also one round just down the road at the Gray Fox course, another 18-hole layout. And then come November, the weekend following Thanksgiving, I host the Cold Turkey, which will play two rounds over at the Gray Fox course. You try and get a round in a golf using this course during that time of the year. It just simply... <laughs> Sounds like some other conversation. Uh, always right after Thanksgiving, cold turkey, come check out that event. That's now blossomed into a staple of the year as well. I think we have moving into year 17 or 18 of that taking place. So watching CJ. Has that one almost slipped out? Jason LeCain <laughs> breaking everything down for the whole group. We're through, Fiend. Just three holes left to play. Pick up yourself a DG Guy coin cryptocurrency shirt. I've got those available. GT Flooring helps us out as we look at 16, par 3, 400. Pretty close to dead straight, or at least you want to throw it relatively straight. Protected by trees here on the green I feel like that's somewhat of a signature of this entire course we'll give you a putting green but anything outside of that 33 feet you're probably working for it Andrew sitting on a two-stroke lead over card mate Tanner at the moment just three left to play And although we've seen some significant struggles out of Tanner, it's quite telling to still see him in second place at the moment. So although I know he's had some challenges, ultimately battling hard. I liked it. Righty forehand, finding the left side. Struggles continue here for Tanner. I know I asked during the front nine if, in fact, uh, what season you actually like playing disc golf in as we're watching some spring disc golf at the moment, even though the drone previews came in during the fall. So I guess my question for the back nine, if you want to win some jerky, double G jerky that is, the best disc golf jerky on the planet. Are you going to come play in Wisconsin? And if so, is this a course that you'd want to take on? We've got a course here. We've got a course three miles down the road. In fact, there's 27 holes just down the road. Working on some more property nearby. Southeastern Wisconsin has a lot of disc golf, as does the entire state. So... Is it on your calendar? Are you going to come play some disc golf in Wisconsin? Maybe an amateur world championships some year? The U.S. Women's takes place about an hour from here in Madison, Wisconsin later in the year. We had Worlds here in 98, along with 2007. Two thousand seven Pro Worlds up in northern Wisconsin, so plenty of good disc golf in Wisconsin. Is it on your calendar? And if so, when? Thanks. Andrew looks to be in maintenance mode. He's not seeing anyone else on the card make a real hard hard charge and the guy closest to him in Tanner is really struggling here on 16. Oh, shit. I that was him. So did I, man. 
<laughs> Jeff almost putting it in from long range. Getting in position. That was almost on your team last year. I think I'm hearing a little Sandy Point team invitational chatter is what was happening there. Sandy Point, big supporter and sponsor of many of my vlogs. Make sure you check them out. SandyPT.com, as in SandyPoint.com. Disc Golf Ranch and Resort. So the bogey for Jeff will bring him to four under. That's going to be tied with CJ. Five off the pace of Andrew. And Tanner struggling on the par three. He's going to walk away with a triple. That brings him back to four under. And most importantly for Andrew, gives him breathing room. I'm Garrett Gerthy. People know me as Double G. I've been making Double G craft jerky since I was 16 years old. I'm always a snacker, so about halfway through, I always find myself reaching for that bag of Double G jerky. My favorite has got to be the garlic lover's dream. I just can't go wrong with garlic and beef jerky. That middle of the round, you get into that slump, I'm going to reach for that Double G craft jerky to help me finish strong. So most of you can't throw like Double G, but if you get his craft jerky, you can certainly eat like him. Go out and get some Double G craft jerky. You can find Double G craft jerky at DoubleGJerky.com where you just hang around my vlogs and win it. Well, and you should buy some, but we're moving over to hole 17. One of the easier holes playing at 2.93 and you're throwing over the quarry. And they were many, many years ago. We're uh, digging out some of the rock and terrain here and now we're just throwing across it. I'm going to go ahead and say this is actually the most open hole on the entire course, but still try to bring the hills and topography into play. Also interesting to note that hole 16 plays as one of the most difficult holes on the entire course. In fact, it plays as the second most difficult, and 18 plays as the third most difficult. So two out of the hardest three holes on the course are what you finish on, 16 and 18. However, 17, ripe for birdies. And you hear the wind pick up, because if the rain hasn't been enough, now you've got the rain. Tanner. The lefty drive, setting up the forehand approach, as we've seen before. Oh! And he cans it. Tanner Helm. Way downtown, the blind shot on 17. He's going to run it down. After the struggle bus dropped him off on hole 16, comes back to 17, the blind throw in birdie. CJ not able to answer <laughs> from similar distance. Andrew still with a comfortable lead at this point. Solid run. Jeff's got the hood up. Hood's up, birdie's down. That's not a thing, but it is for Jeff. CJ for par. Like on uh, whatever that stupid movie was, yeah. 
Andrew Brown looking to close out one more hole on 18. Hoping that Scotty Tuhati or no one else, Ryan Heaty or anyone else from the chase card is able to give him a run. He's holding off the rest of the lead card. Big shout out to Ledgestone Insurance Open. Jamie and Nate and crew, everybody over there. Big supporters of disc golf in the entire Midwest, of course, but also helping out with this event. 354 feet, a very difficult, demanding par three to close it out. This is a tunnel shot. You need to get lucky. Not that lucky. Wow, that was real lucky. And you see the pin way off in the distance. There's a way to access it. The lefty needs for that to hook up. He gets a late kick. For as much as he's found himself off the fairways, he's also gotten quite a few favorable kicks that are keeping him on the edge. Hole 18, as I mentioned before, the third most difficult hole on the course. Average 3.47. Very rare to find a birdie here. We'll see what our lead card can do. He didn't see the secondary kick, but not as punishing as it could have been. And Jeff is just trying to find a fairway. Puts him perfectly in line to get up and down for the bogey. Up there. Oh, yeah. I'm sure we'll see Jeff, along with probably all these individuals, for the 2022 iteration of the Skyline Classic. Big shout out to, again, my cameramen for themselves around this course in the wind, the rain, the nasty conditions. Thank you to all the supporters and sponsors you've seen, whether it's during the drone previews over there from Boom Disc Golf or the transition screens in between the holes. Thank you guys so much. And there'll be a huge list that we'll show you at the end of a number of other sponsors all making the coverage possible along with some of that added cash. So thank you guys so much. I appreciate all of you. More rolling umbrella action. That is a solid putt to finish for CJ King. Methodical, patient, consistent, everything needed. Andrew Brown will shoot. Three under for the round, nine under for the day, and that will be enough. Holding off all chase card competitors, Andrew Brown, your champion of the 2021 Skyline Classic, presented by Innova, also his personal sponsor. Thank you guys for joining. I'll give you guys a little look at the scores and our final supporters and sponsors. Looking forward to seeing you all for the 2022 Skyline Classic. I'm the Disc Golf Guy. We'll see you at the next one.